let's implement monitoring the drag coefficient alongside the residuals as the iterations proceed. Highlight monitors and under create, select create monitor for a drag, for drag. I'll leave the default name. I'll say print to console, so it'll print the drag coefficient to the console. It'll also plot it. I found that it's a good idea to also write that to a file, and you'll have to search for that, you know, a, a file with that name to figure out where in the subfolders it's putting it. And we want the force on the entity, you know, denoted as pipe underscore wall, so that'll give me the force on that on, on the wall. And by default, it'll let you do it only over entities that are set to a wall boundary type. And the direction is x because we want the, um, the force in the direction of the flow, the axial direction, which Fluent calls x. I'll say OK. And I also need to input the reference value so that it has the right values to use for the non-dimensionalization. So the reference value is only going to, it's not going to affect the drag, it's going to affect the drag coefficient. So I'll come under here, reference values. I'll pull this over here. And set the area reference to, let's start with row. Row should be, the row reference should be one. The velocity reference should be one, two, because that's our average velocity. And the area needs to be two pi r l, which is 1.885. And now I can go in, and in, in fact, what I'll do is I'll just reinitialize the solution. So I'll start the solution from scratch, and I'll say run calculation to 1,000 iterations, and I'll say calculate. So it's see, it's plotting how the drag coefficient is changing as the iterations proceed. I can see the residuals over here, so I can switch between the two windows. So nothing's changed with the residuals. In fact, you know this hasn't changed the solution at all um, in, in this particular case. But I wanted to show you this because it's really a good idea to monitor um, something else, particularly the drag coefficient, if appropriate, as the iterations proceed. And it's printed it to the console, and you can see that the drag coefficient is not changing, and it's of the order of 0.17, which is close to the expected skin friction coefficient of 0.16, and that's you know that's a good kind of a quick check that that value is is right. In fact, initially I forgot to set the right value of the area, and I got a different result here. And then I, I was like, why is it dif so different from the skin friction coefficient? And and I fixed it with that with the with setting the right reference values. And and so now we have. Um, a good solution, and we can look, we can do the post processing and look at the results.